Each one of you has picked up a bulletin. I'm not going to go over all the things in the bulletin. But I want us to remember our shut-ins that's in the bulletin, our sick. Also, let's remember uh, Paul Luttrell. He's, he's found out this past week he's got COVID, so let's remember him. And also, I, I read in there with that uh, Deborah Clark, I think it was the end of the month, she'll be having her feet put in, so let's remember her also as she struggles. Um, also, uh, the evening of prayer will be Monday evening at 7 o'clock, so that'll be tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, so I hope each one of you would, can attend and have the opportunity. Man, that's all I have this morning. Into our worship service this morning, our song will either be Joel Foster, <laughs> Scripture reading Rusty Maddox, or a lesson by Dennis Strine. Closing prayer by Joe Mormon. And we'll begin our worship service with opening prayer. We'll be with Mike Fairclough. <laughs> Let us go to God in prayer. O Lord God, great and holy is your name above all names. There is none like you. We are so thankful that you are our God that you are righteous, that you are good, that there is no evil in you. We thank you that you created this world and everything in it. We thank you that you created us and that you made us different from all your other creation. You made us in your image. Help us, Lord, to strive to live the way you wanted us to live to walk in your ways, to act as your children. Help us, Lord, to always take your word into our heart and proclaim it to those around us. Help us always strive to be the best we can be because you are our God and we are your children. 
Help us always to live pleasing to you. We're thankful for this time of worship that you have bestowed upon us. We ask that you watch over us at this time as we worship you. We ask that our worship be done in spirit and truth, and that we always strive to do that. We thank you for your presence with us here this day. Help us to always understand and to realize that where two or three are gathered, you are there in your midst. So we can be assured that right now, you are here with us. You hear our prayers, our songs. You hear your, our, your, your word proclaimed. And you see our fellowship with one another. And we ask that that always be a good thing. And that we do so in a way which is pleasing to you. We ask that you be with those that are sick this morning, that you watch over them and care for them. Ask also that you are with those that are in need of your spiritual guidance. That you use the events of life to teach them and bring them back to you. And also that you use us mm -hmm. to reach out to them and care for them. Help us, Lord, to be better people in all that we do. We ask that you be with the situation in the world today, with the violence that's going on in Iraq and China, and, yeah, the Ukraine, and as well as many other countries, Yemen, and quite a few of the African countries. It seems like human life has very little value in a lot of places in the world. Although this country isn't perfect, it's far better than many places. And we're thankful that we live here where we can be free to worship you without fearing for our safety and for our lives. We ask that you be with those that are inflicted with the COVID throughout the world. There's still a lot of people that are struggling and have issues with this throughout the world. We also ask that you be with those that are struggling because of the cost of basic goods today. The inflation that's going on so much that's making it very difficult for a lot of people to make ends meet. A lot of people are living week by week. We ask that you watch over these people and help them through the tough times that a lot of people are struggling with. We ask, Lord, that you look down upon this world, help it to be a peaceful place, help its people to recognize that you are God, and that nothing's going to change that, no matter how many people don't believe in you or how many other people want to worship some other God, it doesn't change the fact that you are the only God. And we're thankful that we worship you and that we are your children. Be with those that are participating in the worship this morning. Help them to lead in a way that brings honor and glory to your name. We're thankful for your son who so willingly went to that cross and died for us. Who so willingly shed his blood to cleanse us of our sin. We offer this prayer in his name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see everyone here. It's great to be back. Be much improved over how I was a couple of weeks ago. Actually being able to hear for the first time in about two months. So good to see each one of you that's here this morning. <clears throat> Go light your world. 
Go light your world. There is a candle in every soul, some burning brightly, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. Carry your Come 
As we gather around the table this morning, let's try to take all of our worldly thoughts out of our mind and place our thoughts upon Christ as he hung and died upon that cross for each and every one of us. We have the bread which represents his body. We have the fruit of the vine which represents the blood that was shed for each and every one of us. And he tells us, and it reads on the front of our table, it says, this do in remembrance of me. If you would, I'd like to read 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. We'll now have the prayer for our bread. Pray with me. Our God and our Father, we come in prayer giving thanks for this opportunity we have to gather around that table in this memorial service on this first day of the week as your word commands to remember the great sacrifice given to us by Jesus. And as we partake of this bread, which represents Jesus' body, let us all take in this in remembrance of him. And may we all do so in a manner well pleasing unto thee. And it's in Christ's loving name we pray. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Well, now how to prayer for our fruit of mine. Our kind Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity 
<coughs> then we have the packet this, the 45, which represents the shed blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we as Christians partake of this in a manner pleasing of the Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good friends. That concludes the Lord's Supper. Another part of our worship service is giving back to the Lord because we know He's bound to bless each and every one of us. If you would, I'd like to read 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2, and it reads, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in stores. God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. We'll now have a prayer for all. Heaven, Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for all that we have, and we enjoy in this life. We know all good things do come from thee. We pray that we will never lose sight of this. We prepare now to give back us a small portion, but we do it in a manner you find pleasing. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Seven five. Two seven five.
chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. That's Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. I am reading from the New American Standard Version. And it reads, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And also Matthew chapter 13, Verse 33. Matthew 13 and verse 33. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three pecks of flour until it was all leaven. <coughs> You go into the grocery store. Have you ever wondered why they had these displays at the end of the aisle? You know, like potato chips, candy. But it's not even anywhere close to the aisle that you find them in. Because they're trying to influence your body. They're trying to get your taste buds set on those chips, or that candy, or the soft drinks, or whatever. The power of influence is staggering. When scientists were studying the planet Uranus, they were convinced that it was under the influence of something else, and so they kept searching and they then discovered the planet Neptune. Influence is that moral or spiritual force or power or capacity by which we have an effect on a person, a condition, or development. Jesus, in the verses that Rusty read, represents that moral force, that influence through metaphors. The word salt and light. Paul had wrote his letters on papyrus. Papyrus paper was made from a plant that had undergone change. Your bulletin 
that you have, your handout this morning, was made on paper. A 40-foot tree, 8 inches in diameter, can make about 10,000 pages of paper. It also uses over a million gallons of water to make those 10,000 pages. It undergoes change. What was once a tree, you now hold it in your hand. In much the same way, we cannot exert a wholesome influence for Christ until we have undergone a change, a spiritual conversion. And this change is so important to us. In Matthew 18 and verse 3, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, that unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. In Acts chapter 3, we have Peter's second sermon. In verses 19 and 20, after healing the lame man, he said to those who had gathered around and witnessed that miracle, Repent therefore, Turn back that your sins may be blotted out. That times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. A change is produced by God's word. In Psalm 90, 19 and verse 7, David wrote that the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. And Paul in Romans 1 verse 16 said that it is the gospel of Christ that is the power of God for salvation. This change is threefold in nature. Faith, repentance, and baptism. In Acts 15 and verse 9 it says, And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Our change of heart produced by faith. And then in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 41, Jesus said, The men of Nineveh shall rise up at the generation with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. Our lives also change when it is produced by repentance. And the third we find in Romans 6 and verse 3. Paul writes, you, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? It is that change that results in the new life that we have been given. For Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and the new has come. The influence of these three things results in a change in our relationship with God. Warren Wearsby wrote, we can benefit from change. Anyone who has really lived knows that there is no life without growth. When we stop growing, we stop living and start existing. But there is no growth without challenge, without change. Life is a series of changes that create challenges. And if we are going to make it, we have to grow. Just as People read letters. They read us. An example we can find would be in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Where Peter writes, Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. <clears throat> How are we living our lives today? Do we even realize that we can win souls by how we live? 
Contrary to popular belief, we are an open book. People see between the covers oftentimes more than we realize. Many can tell if we are walking the talk or we're just talking the walk. The letters that we write with our lives are written for the good of others. The motto of all great men is God first, other second, self last. Christ lived and Christ died for the good of others. 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, Paul says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. And that is the essence of 1 Corinthians 10, verse 24, where it says, Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Of course, we're not talking spiritual wealth or physical wealth. We're talking about others' happiness. How much do we do on behalf of others to make them happy? Paul reminds us in Romans 15, verse 1, that we who are spiritually strong must bear the failures of the weak. We must lift them up. We must guide them. We must direct them. We must influence them to do that. You know, somewhere in our house, and I don't know where they are. I've got a satchel of all the letters that I had written to Vicki when I was in the military <coughs> deployed. The letters that I'd written in Sicily, the ones, the Gulf War, they're somewhere. But they are expressions of myself. The letters that we write with our lives are expressions of the author of those letters. As letters of Christ, we are to give an expression of Christ to the world. In Philippians 2 and verse 5, it says that we are to have the mind of Christ. In Galatians 2 and verse 20, that we are to have Christ living in us. In Philippians 1 and verse 20, it says that we are to magnify Christ in our lives. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, that we are to be transformed into the image of Christ. And Jesus said to Philip in John 14 verse 9, that to see Christ was to have seen the Father. This bears the question. Think deeply on this. Can Christ be seen in us? Whether it's in our speech, or our dress, or what we do, or our attitude, or where we go. What impression of Christ do others get by reading our letters of life? Our letters bear the signature of their author. As letters of Christ, we bear and wear his name. It is in Acts 11, verse 26, where we find that the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. That the Lord's disciples were called by the Lord's name, Christ. And we can't even say the word Christian without saying Christ. James writes in James 2 and verse 7, Are they the ones 
who blasphemed the honorable name by which you were called. As letters bearing the name of Christ, we need to live our lives so that we will never bring shame or reproach to that name. Let us reflect the true meaning of the name Christian. Have you ever met somebody that after talking with them for a little while, you come away and said, I can't figure that person out. I don't know where they're coming from. Friends, letters of our lives should be easy to read. When we read the apostles' letters, when we read the letters written by Paul and James and Peter and John and the Hebrew writer, it's easy to see in those letters that they were true followers of Christ. Even those who had seen them, heard them, were astonished. In Acts 4, verse 13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished. They recognized that they had been with Jesus. Are we any different than anyone else that we meet on the street? Would someone ever have to wonder if we're a Christian unless we told them because of our actions? I've told the story several times of my time working in a car dealership and one of the other salesmen was talking about how great his church was. How good he felt when he walked out. Now the congregation that used to worship off of Haywood Road. He said, you walk in, that place was alive. felt so great when he walked out the door. I was, I was going back to my office. He was in his office with the door closed, cussing out somebody over the phone. This was the first thing after the doors opened on a Monday morning. And I cracked his door open. I poked my head in and said, well, yesterday sure didn't last long, did it? I gave whoever was on the phone a break because he cussed me out as I went down to my office. You see what we said? We are to be different. People should not have to be told who we are. Our actions should prove who we are. There are some letters that don't contain a whole lot college freshman wrote home to his dad. He said, Dear Dad, no money, no fun, your son. And dad wrote back to his son. He said, Dear son, no money, no fun, too bad, your dad. <laughs> Some letters do not contain much. That's true. But what does our letter of Christ contain? We're to lead a full and abundant life. We should be seeking to exert as great an influence as we can for the gospel, as much as we can. 
Jesus certainly lived an abundant life. Acts 10 verse 38 reminds us that he went about doing good. I'm going to read a couple of verses of scripture. I want you to notice the emphasis that is placed on full. The word full. Acts chapter 9 verse 36. Now there was at Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In Romans 15, verse 14. I myself also am satisfied about you, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another. That is the abundant life that we're promised. But are we living the abundant life? Are we full? Are we full? And as letters, sadly, we can become blotted. And those blots will be the first thing that people will see. I remember in high school, I was fascinated by those old-fashioned ink pens, you know, with the ink well in them, you know, that and you get, they, they upgraded them now. You had the little capsules you could put on there and pop it, and it fill out. And then it had that nice tip that if you used it right, produced really wonderful writings. I always seem to press too hard on it, leave that big blot of ink right there. Don't hand in a paper with that on it because the teacher will see that blot. We need to be careful that we remain unstained and unspotted. Sadly, people will focus more on the blots than they will on any of our virtues. We've been washed by the blood of Christ. The sins of the world can blot and blend. <clears throat> Excuse me. As first as James chapter one verse twenty uh, twenty seven says, religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this: to visit the orphans and widows in their affliction, to keep oneself unstained from the world. When our lives become blemished, the influence that we have will become damaged. We must, to our very best abilities, maintain our spiritual purity. And if we are not concerned about that, then it will show as a fundamental lack of appreciation for what Christ and his blood has done for us. Brother Leroy, Leroy Brownlow, wrote many tracts, many Bible lessons, and he wrote a poem. And that poem says there's a gospel according to Matthew, to Mark, to Luke, and John too. There's another gospel that many are reading, the gospel according to you. All teachings we find in the Bible are facts we know to be true. We must live them to make them the gospel, the gospel according to you. Many read not the words of the Bible. I will tell you what some of them do. They are reading the book you are writing, the gospel according to you. There's great power in gospel preaching. The Bible teaches that is true. But the sermon most likely to influence others is the gospel according to you. To live all of his teachings so true so that all may see his spirit in the gospel according to you. Are we writing our gospel? And we are. 
a new chapter every day. By the things that we do, by the things that we say, that letter is read by everyone. Others read that gospel, whether they are faithless or whether they are true. What is the gospel according to you? We influence folks every single day. We influence our children to do the things that we want them to do. They see what we do. They hear what we say. They see what we watch. They see how we act. Let us write the letter according to us in a way that is a positive influence to all. If you are not a child of God this morning, we want to give you that opportunity. In faith, in repentance, confession, and baptism, having your sins washed away in New Testament baptism, you can become that child of God. And you can start writing the letters according to you, the gospel according to you, to your faithful life in Christ. And if you are a child of God and you have faltered, you have stumbled, or Maybe you just need our prayers. We want to give you that opportunity as together we stand and we sing. evening at 6 for our evening worship, also tomorrow evening at 7 for the evening prayer, and of course our Bible study on Wednesday evening. This time we'll be dismissed, Brother Joe will lead us in our closing prayer. Pray with me please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being able to meet you together in, in, in your name, praising you and Jesus. Thank you for everything you bless us with us today. We're always thankful for our families, our homes, and the things that we have to live with every day. We are, we are fortunate beyond much, much world, people of this world are, Heavenly Father. We pray for our country, the United States of America. You bless our leaders. Be with them as they lead this country. And we influence those around us in good. 
for your church. Pray for the poor, the, the ones in the world who are suffering wars and, and the, the, the being oppressed. We pray for them that you can change for better. Heavenly Father, we are always mindful of our number who are sick and not able to be with us. We pray for uh, pray for Ruth and Deborah and Rick every day that, she, that Deborah can find a relief from her sickness. And we pray for Sue Dill and the team in Westmore and they be with them as they, they have sickness every day. We pray for others who we know are not with us because of illness today. Be with them, watch over and care for them. Heavenly Father, we, we want to listen to the lesson today. We take the letters of our life by people, show Christian, Christian living. We, 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 we all the influence those around us every day. We pray that we would recognize that and be a good influence as a Christian. We, we pray, Heavenly Father, you be with us now as we prepare to leave this place. Come back in the next appointed time to worship you and to be with your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you get strong and lovely in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.